Okay, what's going on, everybody? We are here. We are live. I want to thank you all for joining me today. If you can see and hear me clearly, please drop a one in the live chat and then we can get today's stream started. And as I'm waiting for the ones to come in, if you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button because that is the most important thing you can do for me on this channel. What it does is that it helps to make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get the notifications and it also helps to push this video through the YouTube algorithm. Secondly, if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now, I see you ghost watching, please do me a favor and do yourself a favor by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. And lastly, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms to your family and friends so that everyone knows that I'm currently live and it does also help me help give me a slight boost in the YouTube algorithm as well. And with the introduction out of the way, we can now get today's stream started. So like many of you yesterday, uh, I was, uh, a little confused, right? I was a little confused um, seeing all these social media posts, um, all these pictures and videos of African immigrants, African migrants, uh, African illegal immigrants, right? Gathered all throughout New York City protesting at City Hall, or at least so I thought. I thought it was a protest. That's what it appeared to be. Um, and like many of you, I was wondering why in the world are all these black migrants, black immigrants protesting? And why is it only them? And like many of you, I'm sure by now you've done a little digging and you saw what was going on. I want to get into that today because, you know, I see some uh, videos and posts going around, you know, that they were protesting and that wasn't really the case. And that's what I want to get into and really break down, right? Because what was really happening here, especially if we go by the title of this Fox News article, it reads, African migrants swarm NYC's City Hall for hearing on experiences of Black immigrants. So that right there alone tells us that this was clearly orchestrated by New York City City Council. So this is something that was put together on purpose. But why? Why was it put together deliberately by New York City City Council? Um, and that's what I want to get into by the time we get to the end of the stream. So what I want to do now is let's go through this article. Let's read this off. And we're going to hop around and look at a few data points and whatnot and go through some other articles to really break down what happened in New York City yesterday, um, why only uh, black migrants came out and why a uh, city councilwoman who happened to be Hispanic was the one who organized it. We're going to get into all that right now. So as we get ready to go through this article, hit that like button and let's go. And the article reads as such a hearing on the experiences of African migrants in New York City drew a crowd of more than 1,000 people Tuesday morning, some of whom were reportedly under the false assumption that they would be getting work visas or green cards. Let's stop right there. One of the reasons that so many of them even turned out was because of that. When you read through a handful of articles concerning this event that took place yesterday. Uh, one thing that you consistently see and you consistently read is that for some reason, these guys were under the assumption that they were going to get green cards, work visas, and like free housing vouchers, which is crazy. Uh, well, I guess when you think about it, it isn't crazy because we've been seeing a lot of this pretty much happen, especially in Chicago when it comes to the, you know, free housing, right? 5,000 illegal immigrants received free housing in Chicago uh, so far. So that assumption wasn't too crazy, but the reality is that how they were able to get so many to show up was by putting out false information that they were going to get all this free stuff. That's why so many showed up to begin with. And like I said, when you go through a handful of articles, you see that come up constantly, that they were under some false assumption that they were going to get uh, a bunch of free things, right, if they showed up, which clearly didn't happen. But I digress. Let's carry on. Video footage obtained by Fox News Digital shows throngs of people outside City Hall 
with many gathered at a park across the street. City Council Member Alexa Aviles, who serves as chair of the Committee on Immigration and organized the hearing, said it's centered around the experiences of Black immigrants. Now, here's a direct quote from Alexa Aviles, who organized this event for Black migrants so that we can all understand their experiences, right? Well, let's get into what she had to say, this quick quote. She stated, we must uproot the anti-Blackness that plagues our system of care. This work requires dedication, creativity, and a city willing to fund our short, mid, and long-term needs, Avila said. Let's stop right there. Why in the world, in New York City, New York State, a liberal city slash state, is anti-Blackness plaguing their system of care? That's the first question that you have to ask. Why is that? Because once again, New York City slash state is Democrat from top to bottom. From top to bottom. They're liberal from top to bottom. They're Democrats from top to bottom. And last time I checked, I thought Democrats love black people. <laughs> the last time I checked, I, I thought liberals love black folks. So why is anti-blackness plaguing their system of care in New York? Well, clearly these people, as it pertains to, when I say these people, I mean the Democrats, clearly they aren't who they say they are. And this is a point that I make over and over again on this channel. When you look at cities like New York, Chicago, Boston, Detroit, if the Democrats were who they said they were, this stuff wouldn't even exist. And I find it very interesting that this even applies to black immigrants as it pertains, pertains to the relationship between Democrats and black people. This relationship that's the equivalent of uh, uh, of someone that's in an abusive relationship. It isn't something that's just a negative for black folks, but it's a negative for black immigrants as well. Because what they do is that they love to play on these disparities for your votes. And they're the ones that create these disparities. But then turn around and say, hey, look at Trump. <laughs> He's the reason for all your problems. Yet the city slash state is Democrat from top to bottom. This should be a non-issue, but it isn't a non-issue. It's a very real issue, apparently. An issue that they create. And then they say, vote for me so I can solve it. But then they never solve it. Right. So let's carry on. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, before we carry on, what I want to do is I want to play a quick clip. I want to play a quick clip from what Alexa Avilas had to say. It's very cringe, not gonna lie, it's a very cringe clip. Um, and that's exactly why I want to play it <laughs> because it's cringe. So let me pull that up for you right now. Let me move this to the side and let me pull this video up for you very quickly so that you can hear what she had to say. We're going to go to her Twitter page and I'll give you, you take a look at who this woman is um, and what she's about. So let's pull that up. Let's pull up Alexa's Twitter page. There we go. Oh, it looks a bit out of frame. All right. So this is Alexa Vilas. This is her right here. And what I want to do is let's go back and let's check out this post. She put here yesterday, today's hearing centers the experiences of black immigrants in New York City and has turned out over 1,000 people. We must uproot the anti-blackness that plagues our system of care. This work requires dedication, creativity, and a city willing to fund our short, mid, and long-term needs. Let's hear what she had to say. Because this is very cringe, and I'm literally just playing this just to hurt your ears. 
And today, we are having a hearing censoring the experiences of Black immigrants in New York City. And if you are not overwhelmed by the beautiful Black faces that are present here today and surrounding City Hall, something is profoundly wrong with you. Did you hear that? If you weren't enamored by the beautiful black faces that were surrounding City Hall, then something is wrong with you. Boy, she's playing it up well. She is playing it up very well. Playing to the crowd beautifully. I'm going to speak on that a little bit more as we go on. But what I want to do now is get back into the article. So let's jump back into that Fox News article. And I'm very mad that you all are seeing me this small. That's not how, just from a production standpoint, like that really irritates me right now. That looks so fugazi. Wow, that makes me mad. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys didn't care. Right? I'm sure it didn't bother you. So let me pull the article back up and let's jump back into that. I wish you guys understood how upset that made me just now that you were looking at me in this little tiny box. It was so stupid looking. But anyways, let's carry on, right? Let's carry on. The show must go on. <laughs> All right. So we're going to jump back uh, into the article because I want to touch on a few more things here. So we scroll down here. It states, Avila's colleagues commended her for organizing the hearing. Council member Sandy Nurse, who represents the city's 37th district, said the experiences of black migrants is very different than other groups. And I am proud that the council is highlighting this disparity once again in a city slash state that's Democrat from top to bottom. My question for black Americans as well as black migrants, if you're watching, why in a city slash state like this is the experiences of black migrants so much different from everybody else's? That shouldn't be the case, right? If the Dems were who they said they were, shouldn't be the case. Um, but it is. And what you see is that it's consistently the case across all cities that are Democrat from top to bottom. Some people will point to Republican led cities and state and sell well say, state and say, well, it's the same thing over there. But the point is, is that it shouldn't be if the Dems were who they said they were. And that's the point. Now, what I want to do here is get into this article. And oops. This article here comes from the Associated Press. So I want to jump into this because it gives us a little bit more detail concerning the issues that black migrants are dealing with right it gives us a little bit more detail concerning what they're dealing with um and i want to highlight these things because i want to keep driving the point home that in a state and city ran by democrats from top to bottom that shouldn't be the case but because it is it consistently shows that they're just playing you they're playing black americans and now black migrants for fools that's what's happening here uh but before we get into this article here I do have to make sure I give my thank yous. I got to give my thank yous. Uh, shout out to J.D. Walker for becoming a channel member. I appreciate you, J.D. Walker, for your support. Shout out to Saul for always coming through. Trump's pulling up to the bodegas. Yeah, I heard Trump. He pulled up to the bodegas and he's kicking it in Harlem. <laughs> Trump's all over New York, you know, because, you know, they're holding him hostage inside of that uh, six week, uh, six week trial. You know, I, I think he has to go to, if I'm not mistaken, Trump has to go to every uh trial date and sit through every boring aspect of it um and i believe if he misses a day alvin bragg said they're going to put him in jail so <laughs> i guess why he's there he's hitting up the bodegas shout out to jay bird for 25 months of service i salute you jay bird thank you very much bro for 25 months of service now let's hop into this article here Let's jump into it uh, to get a little bit more detail on some of the uh, issues and disparities, right, that black migrants are dealing with that they shouldn't be because these are Democrat ran cities, but they are. <laughs> so let's jump into that right now. Uh, so once again, this is an AP article and it reads as such. And this is going to be a, some slight review from the last article, but we'll get into the other stuff that's different as we read on. Uh, black immigrants turned out 
in the hundreds on Tuesday across from New York City Hall during a hearing about racial inequities in the city shelter and immigration support system. Wow. Racial inequities, huh? In the city's shelter and immigrant support system? Okay. Vote blue no matter who. Over 1,500 migrants, mostly from Guinea, assembled in City Hall Park after it became clear that only around 100 people uh, would be accommodated inside for the hearing. The city council considered relatively minor proposals, minor proposals, you know, not, not, nothing too crazy. One set of bills would require administrators to collect better data on migrants and city services. Another effort, a resolution called on the federal government to eliminate or to reimburse immigration application fees. City council members are asking for better data because they believe with some evidence acknowledged by city officials that black migrants are more often turned away from shelters. And I shouldn't laugh because I guess it's not funny, right? I don't know. I guess it's not funny, but I can't help but to laugh because of what I've been reiterating the entire stream. I thought Democrats love black people. I thought they were on our side. What's going on? Why are they being turned away at shelters? That's my question. If I can quote the great Rob from Black Light Revelations 2, who's in the live chat right now, here's my question. <laughs> if the Democrats love you like they said they do, then why are they even turning away disproportionately black migrants? That's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. But I digress. Let's carry on. Oh, they're going to get into excuses now. And I'm going to explain why they're excuses in a moment. City officials say African migrants are more likely to arrive to the city without children, meaning they're often less of a priority for limited shelter space. The 30 to 60 day notice disproportionately affects black immigrants, said city council member Alexa Vilas. Once again, Alexa Vilas is the woman that put this whole thing together, right? And she's saying that it affects you disproportionately, black immigrants, that is. This is a cop out. This is a cop out, uh, especially, you know, going back to this portion right here. Right? Let me zoom in where they're saying why black migrants are disproportionately uh, uh, not allowed to stay at the shelter. <laughs> they, they pull up and they're like, no, nah, fam, you hit the park, hit the park. Get out of here. You can't stay here. It says city officials, once again, city officials say African migrants are more likely to arrive to the city without children, meaning they're often less of a priority for limited shelter spaces. The reason that's a cop out is because if that's the case, then all these shelters should be filled with families only. Every time I've done a video, concerning these migrant melees happening at migrant shelters. You notice how there's, for the most part, not a black migrant in sight. And apparently, allegedly, there's families in there. But these shelters are mainly filled with Hispanic illegal immigrant males, military age, that is, right? It's filled with them. And whenever you see these wild ordeals pop off that I cover where you're seeing these migrants fighting NYPD, fighting Yonkers PD, you know, trying not to get arrested. Other migrants in these shelters beating up on police officers, beating up on security guards in an attempt to stop an arrest where NYPD and Yonkers PD are using the most amazing level of restraint we've ever seen. There's almost never a black migrant in sight. Ever ever that's by design for the reasons that i stated earlier when it comes to the democrat party they thrive on disparities between black americans and everybody else and now we're seeing they're running that same game between black immigrants and everybody else because they know that they can gaslight you with systemic racism, white supremacy, the legacy of Jim Crow, 
the legacy of slavery. And I'm not arguing that that stuff doesn't matter and doesn't exist and doesn't play a part. That's not what the argument is. So, you know, calm down some of you before you get your panties in a bunch. You don't have to type away and say, oh, this stuff is this real. You're downplaying it. Just relax. OK, my point is, is that they maintain these disparities deliberately so that they can go to the well of slavery. They can go to the well of Jim Crow. They can go to the well of white supremacy. They can go to the well of systemic racism, this endless bottomless well where they can always go into that well and say, hey, it's because of this right here that these disparities exist. But at a certain point, you gotta start scratching your head and saying, wait a minute, like I've been saying over and over again, if the city slash state is DNC from top to bottom, shouldn't this stuff not exist anymore? So then you have to start asking yourself, is it really all those things that I said prior? Or is it the DNC? And is it the DNC playing you? Which one is it? It could be both. But it appears to me that at this moment in time in 2024, it's more the DNC than anything. Now, I know some of you will say, well, the Republicans aren't going to do anything for us, but the Republicans never tell you they're going to do anything for you. It's Democrats that always pretend to be your friend. It's Democrats that always pretend like they love you. While at the same time, creating the same disparities that they're claiming they're trying to save you from. Go figure. Go figure. Vote blue no matter who. Now, let's carry on. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading because we're almost done. We're almost done. And I saw a couple super chats come through, uh, I think, hopefully, wink, wink. Uh, I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but let me continue on uh, with this article here. Right. The article continues to read as such. I'm very impressed that, you know, today there was a call to action and you showed up. Council member Mercedes said to those inside the hearing room and outside in the park, well, they showed up because they thought that they were going to get like free housing vouchers. <laughs> they showed up because they thought they were going to get green cards and federal workers permits and a place to stay. That's why they showed up under false pretenses that I'm sure you guys put out. Right. I'm sure they put out. We want support because we have no shelter. Oh, this is a direct quote from a um, a black migrant from Guinea, right? If I'm saying that right, I always feel like I'm not saying Guinea right. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Uh, he said, we want support because we have no shelter. We have nowhere to live. What is What is more, we also want help and legalizing our situation in this country. So, you know, said Ibram Barry from Guinea uh, of gaining work permission and residency. So, you know, Ibram, uh, Ibrima, I guess that's what his name is. He wants a lot. <laughs> he definitely came through for the freebies. I'm not going to lie. Uh, he's looking for a lot right now. He's looking for a lot. Um, but that's, you know, <laughs> what he showed up for and walked away not getting it, right? Uh, while asylum seekers must wait six months for a possible work permit, some migrant groups are offered a shortcut. Guess who isn't offered a shortcut? I'm not going to say it. I don't want to be facetious. I don't want to come off as mean spirited. But uh, the guys that showed up, <laughs> they don't get the shortcuts. They don't get the shortcuts. But once again, that's by design, right? Because we have to maintain these disparities to gaslight you on these disparities to say we're going to be the one that saves you from these disparities that we've created deliberately. And as we close this out, this article out, around 75 percent of immigrants who who are served by the city speak Spanish. I'm glad that I got to that part now, because as we're coming to a close, I want to really make this point, and prove it right. What you're seeing here in closing, and I've said this already, but I'm just going to add a little bit extra tidbit to it as I go through a couple data points. What you're seeing here is the Democratic Party, the DNC, using black immigrants in the same way that they use black Americans. Gaslight you on these disparities. 
because we know the Republicans won't do it. So we'll gaslight you on these disparities that we created, promising that we're going to take care of them. You vote for us and we get into office. And then we start putting in place legislation that by and large does a bunch of other things except for help you directly. But that was the assumption that you were under when you voted for us and that you're going to get some sort of direct assistance. But that's never the case. At best, it goes out to everybody else and you somehow still end up being last in line some way, somehow. And this is what you're seeing with the uh, black immigrant griff, you can call it, uh, coming from Alexa Aviles, Aviles, I think her name is, the city councilwoman uh, that put this whole thing together, right? Because they're going to use black migrants, immigrants, illegal immigrants, you know, they're going to use them to push forward other legislations in the future that will largely benefit all other migrants, except for them as per usual, because the cycle must continue, right? The disparities have to maintain. Take a look at this real quick. Uh, this is from the Migration Policy Institute. If you've been subscribed to this channel for a, a, a good period of time now, then you've seen me bring this up multiple times already before. This is data concerning the uh, illegal immigration count in the United States uh, from 2019, right? Uh, we've all heard about that 11 million number that you see here, uh, but as I've discussed multiple times before, um, I actually side with the Yale University study um, that concluded that there are actually 22 million uh, illegal immigrants in the country, not 11 million. That 11 million number is a number that they've been putting out there over and over again for over a decade now. There's no way that you could stay at 11 million illegal immigrants in the country for over a decade. That just isn't true. So I side with the Yale study that states that there are 22 million illegal immigrants in the country. Now, if you take in the fact as well that since Uncle Joe <laughs> has been in office, um, roughly around 8 million illegal immigrants have entered the country and there are roughly around 2 million gotaways that have entered the country. Uh, that combines for a total of 10 million roughly illegal immigrants that have entered the country in the what? three going on four years that Biden's been in office. So now the real number is around 32 million illegal immigrants in the country. But I'm digressing again. I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I want to focus more here on like the actual percentages of black illegal immigrants versus everybody else. So let's zoom in, right? Mexico and Central America, 67% uh, of them are legal immigrants. South America, 8% of them are legal immigrants. So that's a total of 75% Hispanic illegal immigrants. Asians consist of 15% of illegal immigrants. And Caribbean illegal immigrants, 3%. African illegal immigrants, 3%. That's 6%. Black immigrants make up the smallest portion of illegal immigrants in the United States. And they continue to, even in the midst of this migrant crisis, and you're going to see right now to what degree every other illegal immigrant group blows black immigrants out of the water. All right. Let's come over here. Uh, this is an article here that I went through once before in a live stream. Ever, ever more undocumented Indian migrants follow donkey route. <laughs> to America. That's funny. It's called the donkey route. Uh, I just want to come to this statistic right here is that a point right here origin countries of illegal immigrants in 2021 mexico 4 million el salvador 800,000 india 725,000 guatemala 700,000 honduras 525,000 china 375,000 not a black immigrant country is anywhere named in sight in this data point. They're not top five. They're most likely not even top 10, right? That was from 2021, uh, even though this article was written um, this year in 2024, right? I still can't get over how clean these Indian asylum seekers are. These guys are... <laughs> <laughs> they crossed the border illegally fresh. Well, they're fleeing persecution looking amazing. Man, and I, I got to get like these guys got the Gucci bag on and everything. But listen, you know, I already went through all that already before. Let's come over here. Let's come over here. This is an Axios article. I'm not going to really read anything here, but I just want to go through the data point also. 
Venezuelans surpassed Mexicans crossing U.S. border. As of September of 2023, because this article uh, was written or was published in October of 2023. But in September of 2023, and this is important as we round this all out to prove the point that I was making. In September of 2023, 66,000 Venezuelan illegal immigrants crossed the border in one month. In one month. In September of 23, in one month, one month, 66,000. 53,000 crossed from Mexico, 34,000 crossed from Guatemala. That's in one month, September of 2023, right? Let's see how many black illegal immigrants crossed the border in 2023 in total, right? Mind you, this isn't even counting the rest of Latin America. That's just the top three, Venezuela, Mexico, and Guatemala. Now let's go over here. Remember, 66,000 Venezuelans alone crossed in October of 2023. I had to go to the greatest search engine on earth, all of our gods, right? Our God, Google. <laughs> and I asked the great and mighty Google, how many Africans crossed the border? Because we all know Google has the answer to everything. You ask Google anything, it'll give you the, the right answer every time, right? And Google said, according to the government data obtained by the Times, the number of Africans apprehended at the southern border jumped to 58,462 in the fiscal year of 2023. In one month, more Venezuelans crossed the border than black illegal immigrants overall crossed in that same year. So now in closing, it goes back to the original point that I was making that the DNC is playing black immigrants the same way that they consistently play black Americans, playing on disparities that they themselves are creating at this point in time in 2024, only to lie to you as if they're going to fix the disparities that they themselves created to get your vote so that they can push legislation forward that at best will benefit you last so that the cycle of disparity, voting, rinse and repeat continues. Whatever comes out of this mass, you know, protest, it wasn't a protest, but this mass protest of black Africans uh, that came out to City Hall, whatever comes out of it as it pertains to legislation, it won't benefit them. <laughs> And to the degree that it was, that it will, they're going to be last on the list. Because that's just how the DNC operates. That's just how they operate. Um, they, they, they run this same play over and over and over and over again. And I, you get up here and you articulate it over and over and over and over again. And for some reason, our folks don't seem to get it. <laughs> they don't seem to get it but hopefully this time around come uh this next election cycle we'll get a little sense in us and start figuring things out so with all that being said i want to thank you all for joining me today there are 582 of you in the stream right now please hit the like button on your way out and I do want to make sure to give my proper thank yous to those of you who have supported the channel, because without your support, I do not exist. Shout out to Saul who came through again. He said, didn't the Dems kick out the Haitians twice too? Yeah, they did. <laughs> Biden kicked them out two times. Sure did. He, he set a new record. He was kicking them out so badly that Chuck Schumer had to step in and say, hey, bro, Biden, you got to chill out. <laughs> you got to knock it off. And that's not me making a joke. I pulled that article up multiple times already, but I'm not going to pull it up right now. Shout out to Lloyd Sky9 for coming through. I appreciate you, Lloyd. He said, uh, they only see Hispanics, as Joe Biden pointed out, as hardworking immigrants that merit citizenship. Black immigrants are simply to save face. You said it the best, Lloyd Sky9. You said it the best. And shout out 
to College of Natural Health and Sciences, VDA, for coming through. My black dog and I can hear the chains clanking in the background. Oh, boy. You, you know what time it is, College of Natural Health and Sciences. You hear those chains in the background because, you know, the clanking chains in the background uh, are the clanking chains of Donald Trump possibly winning the presidency. And we all know what's going to happen if Donald Trump gets put back in office. They're going to put you all back in chains. Don't put black folks back in chains. They're going to put you all back in chains. The transatlantic slave trade is coming back. They're going to put you all back in chains. They bringing back black codes and everything. <laughs> Cannot let Trump win. We got to vote blue no matter who. 2024, we have to or else. They're going to put you all back in chains. Don't put us back in chains. <laughs> they gonna put us back in chains. And once again, with all that being said, Thank you all for joining me today. If you showed love on Cash App and Venmo, my apologies. I need to clear up memory on my phone. I don't, I can't, I don't see the notifications. But if you did, uh, thank you very much. Uh, please hit the like button on your way out. Share this video on your social media platforms. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you're a ghost watcher. And I will see you all. Should see you all tomorrow at 6:30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, have a great evening uh, and a safe one. Peace.